Amen. This morning I want to just share. I wish I could say it's a brief message. I have a feeling it's going to be a lengthy one. I just want to prepare you. You're not in a hurry, right? And I want to talk to you um, concerning, and I pray this will be an encouragement to you, and it really does go alongside with what we've been singing this morning, how God is faithful. God is, is truly a faithful God. Can I hear an amen? And I don't know about you, but the lyrics of that song says, you know, he's moved mountains before in our lives and he'll do it again. We got to believe that he'll do it again. Many of us have gone through things in our lives. Some of you have been walking with the Lord for decades and you, you have the testimonies of those type of stories that God has brought you through some very difficult times. Can I hear an amen? Some of you that are just new in the faith, just know that when there is a difficult time ahead and whatever that season's going to look like for you, I want to encourage you that God is faithful and he will prove himself to you. And if, as James says, if you're not going through something right now, just know you will. Amen. Because he says, when you come into these various trials. So whether you're in one, you've come through one, or you're in one, and if not, you'll be going through one. That's the great news of God. And that's all for our growing and trusting to find out that he truly is a faithful God. Amen. So I want to talk about a man that maybe many of you may not realize or know about a whole lot, but there's a book in the Bible that has been written about him, and his name is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet of the Old Testament, and, uh, and, I, and he has a great story, but he just happened to be called during the time of a rebellious nation of Israel. Actually, at the time of his calling, uh, Judah, the, the southern kingdom, was doing well under the kingship of Josiah. And this is during the time that the prophet Jeremiah was called by God. You see, Jeremiah didn't know what was ahead, but God does. And God raised up Jeremiah, just like God is raising up a people right now. And you very well may be those people for such a time as this. And God raised up this young man. He was a young man at the time of Josiah's reign. And actually, Josiah was one of the youngest kings that Israel saw, or that Judah, the southern kingdom, had saw. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And at eight years old of the southern kingdom, Judah, he experienced a lot in his early age. He inherited some wickedness from his predecessors of the kings before him, Manasseh and Amnon. And they were wicked kings and they had set things in motion within the kingdom that at eight years old he may not have realized it, but as he grew older and the priest of that day found the book of the law and as the book of the law was written to Josiah, it crushed his heart, it broke his heart to know how far the people of God had gotten away. And so the Bible clearly tells us because he had a heart for God, you don't have to turn to it, let me just put this on the screen for you, Second Kings chapter 22 verse 2, speaking about Josiah, he says that he did what was right in the, uh, in the sight of the Lord and he walked in all the ways of his father David. See, he was from the lineage of David. And he did not turn aside to the right or to the left. And by the time Josiah was 18 years old, he began to reform Israel. He began to, uh, uh, to abolish the paganism that the previous kings had begun to practice and allow the people of Israel, the people of Judah, to practice. Some of the things that his predecessors such as Manasseh and Amnon began to practice, it angered God, it grieved the heart of God, and God was bringing judgment, was going to bring judgment upon the nation. Some of the things that they practiced was the, the sacrifice of their own children to the pagan god Molech. The other things they allowed to practice was idol worship in the temple. They even went further than just idol worship of, of umpteen gods. They even went as far as to practice sodomy in the temple. They went as far as to allow prostitution within the temple. The temple was the holy place of God, but yet they allowed these practices of sodomy and, practice, and prostitution to take place. 
They practiced astrology. They took their eyes off of God and they began to look at creation and the stars for their guidance. They, pr they even practiced the worship of creation itself. And there's other things that they began to do. You can read about this. This is all inside your Bible. The Mount of Olives that we know is called the Mount of Olives. Then it was called the Mount of Corruption. And so we see that by the time Josiah was 18 years old, he began to change things. And it was for the good. And while this revival was taking place within Judah, while the revival was taking place amongst the people of God, this is the time that God called Jeremiah to rise up. So Jeremiah rose up at a good time under the kingship of Josiah. But it wasn't long that Josiah, in doing his kingly duties, he went to battle and he was killed in battle. And after he was killed in battle, his son succeeded him. And one of the grandsons succeeded him. It mentions the names of these three sons. And it mentions the name of the grandson. But these three sons and grandson only reigned for a short period of time. But during the time of their reign, they went back into evil. And again, it angered the heart of God. And now Jeremiah is living this out. Now Jeremiah has seen this. Now we can hear, and if you read the book of Jeremiah, he was called to bring this nation to repentance. He was the voice to say, repent, for destruction will come. Repent, destruction will come. Repent. And I believe God is calling us in this day for us to be a people who can say to others, with love, repent, destruction is coming. You see, nobody wants to hear that word repent. Their preachers ain't preaching it across pulpits anymore for some time. That's why the Christian church doesn't even look different than the world. I knew it was going to be quiet this morning. It's okay. It's all right. But you see, it was the heart of God and it was the heart of this prophet Jeremiah. And those kings did not want to hear him. They mistreated him. They imprisoned him. They punished him. I mean, they did things to Jeremiah, but Jeremiah persevered. Even through the persecution Jeremiah had to go through through these three kings, Jeremiah endured a priest's message. But he warned them that destruction was coming. And sure enough, destruction came. Because God allowed, because of the lack of repentance, because of their sinfulness, God didn't just turn away. God allowed the pagan kings, pagan nations to come against him. One of those nations was Babylon. One of the, those, that king is the king we know as Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar came against that southern kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar began the siege. Nebuchadnezzar began to control, take hold, make captive, take a... And, and, and he did it in waves, actually. And there was a second wave coming. And, and, and Jeremiah, even in his imprisonment, even in his incarceration, he continued to warn the people of God to repent, but they still did not. And I'm sure enough, Nebuchadnezzar, the last son of Josiah, the last son was Zedekiah. And Zedekiah, what Nebuchadnezzar did with him, is he, Nebuchadnezzar killed Zedekiah's sons right in front of him and then pulled out his eyes so that that was the last image that Zedekiah was able to see in the murdering of his three sons, or his sons. And sure enough, it looked hopeless for the people of Israel. It looked hopeless for the people of Judah, for the nation of Israel. It looked hopeless. They were in despair. It was like, okay, it's over. They're still living. They're living in captivity. They're still living. And they figure it's over. I mean, it's like, what's there to live for? You know, if we don't hear the reports of what's going on in our nation today of the suicides that are taking place right now. We don't hear those numbers. We don't hear the numbers of not just suicides of of people but even within law enforcement because of what's going on against them we don't hear about all these negative all we hear about is what they want us to hear on the media today but we don't hear the destructions of people's lives of alcoholism and drug addiction we don't hear about the abuse that's going on within families because of this whole COVID thing we don't hear about these things that are going on that is destroying the families of America 
the families of the world. We don't, we don't really hear about those things. They're not giving us those numbers. They just want us to know so many more cases again today. So many more deaths again today. But we don't hear the devastation that's going beyond that. Amen. And the people that are living through those. That's why as a people of God, we've got to know that God is faithful. Yes. The people out there in the world, they don't have... The, the, the song says, I have a confidence that I'm in His hands. The people out there in the world, they don't have this confidence. And it's by their choice, whether they don't want to receive this God that we serve, a God that loves and gives His Son for, for them to have eternal life. And so the people of that day, they just felt hopeless. But I love the scripture. And Felicia, I mean, I'm sorry, Felicia. Alicia read it to us this morning. It's in Lamentations. And this is an encouragement for us. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, let me read that to you. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. And they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Somebody say amen. Man, thank God that we can know that He is faithful and that every morning, yesterday's gone, gang. And today we're living and the day that you wake up is the day that you can be reminded to know, God, your mercy is new today for me. I mean, I blew it yesterday, but Lord, I thank you because today you're... See, we can say that with a confidence because of our relationship with the Lord. Others can't. But we know what God's word says, and great is his faithfulness because his mercies are new every morning. Amen. But when you're in a predicament, in a situation in life, like the Israelites, or maybe somebody going through, you can't see that. You may not know that. Or maybe you are in relationship with the Lord, but you kind of got disconnected. You kind of got disconnected with God in your relationship, and it feels sometimes you go through things and you forgot that God is faithful. And the people did in Jeremiah's day. So here's what God tells Jeremiah. And I'm going to read this. And I hope you have your Bibles with you. Would you turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 33? Jeremiah chapter 33. So now you know the situation. Moreover, the word of... I read out of the New King James right here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the house, the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah, which have been pulled down to, fort to fortify against the siege mounds and the sword. They come to fight the Chaldeans, but only to fill their places with the dead bodies of men whom I will slay in my anger and my fury, all for whose wickedness I have hidden my face from this city. Behold, I will bring it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captives of Judah and the captives of Israel to return and will rebuild those places as at the first. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity by which they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities by which they have sinned and by which they have transgressed against me then it shall be to me the name of then it shall be to me a name of joy a praise and honor before all nations of the earth who shall hear all the good that I do to them they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I provide for it Thus says the Lord again, there shall be heard in this place of which you say it is desolate, without man and without beast. 
in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beast. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who will say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good and for his mercy endures forever. So God's saying to them, I'm going to do this again, even though right now you're not experiencing this. Right now you just see desolation and destruction. But listen, I'm going to do this again. He goes on to say, so praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good and for his mercy endures forever. And of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause the captives of the land to return as at the first, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in, in this place which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all the, its cities, there shall again be a dwe dwelling place of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the lowland, in the cities of the south, in the land of Benjamin, in the places around Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, the flock shall again pass under the hands of him who counts them, says the Lord. You see the restoration that it, it, it's, it's going to come. It's coming. Amen. Behold the, days, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth and in those days Judah's will, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely and, in, and this is the name by which she will be called the Lord our righteousness Jehovah Sitkanu as some would say the, the Lord our righteousness for thus says the Lord David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne and the house of Israel. And by the way, this is the prophecy of Christ. This is the prophecy of Jesus. Amen. To come. Let me read verse 17 again. For thus says the Lord David shall never, shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me to kindle grain offerings and sacrifice continually. And I'll tell you, I can't really get too far deep into this. This is a great study, those of you guys that love to study. But we're, I mean, we're talking about this will never end and it never will. You realize that we're part of that priesthood, amen? Somebody say amen. So God was telling this 600 years before Christ. So we're talking 2,600 years ago and look at who we are. We're the priesthood of God still, amen? Offering praises to God. Isn't that awesome? Verse 19, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, thus says the Lord. Now watch, this, this is where I'm going to, we're going to break it down right here. And so the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. And well, let's just begin, let's just stop right there. So God simply is reminding Jeremiah, listen, I'm going to restore this land and I'm going to restore these people. I'm going to do a restoration that is coming that you may not see it right now, but it's going to happen. Now, Jeremiah didn't see that in his time. You've got to remember, this is 600 years before Christ. But it was fulfilled, some of this prophecy was fulfilled when Christ came into the scene 600 years later. And we're still seeing the prophecy fulfilled, as I said, even that we as the royal, royal priesthood, even today, that's offering continual sacrifice up to the Lord. Amen. Are you guys following with me? Have I lost anybody? Raise your hand. Fantastic. Because I was going to start all over again. <laughs> Just kidding. And I'm hoping, I'm trying to make this as simple as I can for us because I have a simple mind and I have to understand this. And God is making this really clear to us. But here's what he says. He says, Jeremiah, if you can break the covenant that I made with day and the covenant I made with night, then this covenant that I'm telling you about, this restoration, this covenant of who's going to reign from the line of David, then that can be broken then. First, you prove to me that you can break my covenant of day and night. So we got to go back. 
all the way to the back of the book of Genesis. Because back through the book of Genesis, we find the covenant with day and night. So go back with me to Genesis chapter 1. You all remember the very first verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So this is the very beginning of history. This is the very beginning of what we know of the origin of the earth, the origin of us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So here we find a chaotic mass but God, who is good God, who is complete God, brings that which had no order and He brings order. That which was void and formless, orderless, God brings order. Verse 3, then God said, listen to this, the very first thing he does. Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the, li the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So evening and morning were the first day. So we know that as he continues for six days of creation, we believe, and you can have a difference of opinion, that's fine, we'll find out the truth when we get there. I believe that there were 24-hour periods of days, of time. Others believe in other things. I don't want to get into it, but we just recently had another discussion of the flat earth. It's not important right here. So, flat earth, you never heard that? Okay. You guys listen to Christian radio? I'm just kidding, amen. But God called the light day and he called the darkness night and I love reading the New King James because he capitalizes the word day he capitalizes the word night so this is just not an ordinary day and night as we know it this is something different this is something special and the reason why I say that is because here we see that on the very first day he created light and he called the light day. And he called the, uh, the, the darkness night. But then when you jump to the fourth day of creation, which we go to verse 14. Look at verse 14. This is the fourth day of creation. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. You know, this is not capitalized. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And so it was, and it was so. And then God set, made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Interesting. So just to kind of touch on this just for a moment. We see that on the fourth day God created the sun and the moon and the stars to give light. Recently a few of us fellas went on an overnight hike up into the high country into the mountains and by the time it got dark, we shut off our lights and there was no campfires allowed, and we, but we shut off the lights in complete darkness. Just darkness. Matter of fact, after we shut off our little lanterns that we had, lamps, it was just so black we couldn't even see each other. And we were only standing a few feet apart from each other and we couldn't see no, each other. 
But after our eyes adjusted a little bit, all of a sudden we began to see. We began to see our images and we began to see a little bit of the trees around us. And there was no moon. What gave us the light was the stars. The, the, the stars were so plentiful up in the sky that it actually gave us just enough light. And so God created all the sun, the moon, the stars in order to provide light for the day and light for the night. On the fourth day. So what was that light on the first day? Well, I, 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 I want you to believe, I, you don't have to agree with me, but I believe it was the presence of God. The reason why I say that is because you've got to remember, we're talking about a world that was formless or void, darkness. And God, out of that void, out of that darkness, God said, we're going we're gonna to bring some order here. And the first, uh, the first order of business is I'm going to bring my presence into this. Amen. Let there be light. Now, I can, I can try to help you with that. And again, you don't have to agree with me. Because I already proved to you that on the fourth day, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. It didn't happen on the first day. So you've got to eliminate the sun, the moon, and the stars. So on that first day, it was his presence. In Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19 and 20, here's what it says. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light. And your God, your glory, your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And the days of your mourning, that's your sadness, shall be ended, says the prophet Isaiah. Isn't that awesome? Revelation chapter 21, verse 23. Listen, here's what's to come. We know that the book of Revelation is that which was given to us so that we know what's ahead. It says about the city, the city of God. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Verse, Revelation chapter 22 verse 5. There shall be no night there. there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever somebody say amen. amen so we see that very well the presence of God is the light that was needed even in that first day of creation you don't have to agree with me or not but I just wanted to show you what the prophets and the and uh, John wrote in the book of Revelation that God is enough to fill and that God is enough to bring the light the lamb is the light that will illuminate heaven somebody say amen, amen. But, but, but going back to God tells Jeremiah Jeremiah can you break this covenant now let's go to the fourth day, the fourth day of creation. Because God created the sun and the moon and the stars to give light. But in this creation and in this covenant, here's what God does. God says, I'm going to rise, I'm going to put the sun here for the seasons and for times. So that we have this timetable to be able to know how things function here on this earth. And there's going to be a certainty of these things. As God put creation into existence, I'll tell you what, he, he, he was genius. I mean, he, he's genius to know that everything that he did has its way of keeping life sustained. Amen. Even us. Isn't that awesome? I mean, man, we can go deep into this because this, this is a great discussion. But it's just to show how great God is and how faithful God is even to all creation, not just a human being, but to all creation. Amen. But let's get back to the sun and the moon. Now, for those of you that like, I don't know how, how many of you like to rise up early in the morning, but I'm up before the sun is. Some of you are as well. And when we see that first dawn break, right now on August the 23rd of the year 2020, because it will change tomorrow and it will continue to change because as we know that the times of these seasons change and the times of even the sunrise but today the sun rose at exactly 6.19 a.m. 
And the sun will set today on a horizon at right here where we live. It will set at 7.42 p.m. Exactly. God set those things in motion. So whether it's, an, it's not important of the time of the sunrise or the time of the sunset, what's important is that God causes the sun to rise on that horizon every morning and causes that sun to go down every evening. And depending on the system of the solar system and where we're at, causes the moon to shine and the moon to give its light, whether it's from its quarter to its half and to its fullness. But God put all of this into place to show us from the time of creation that I have a covenant with day and night and it will never stop. And you can't stop it. You can't change it. You and I are... Listen, we just got to know that when that sun comes up, it reminds us that His mercy is new every morning and that His promise is true. Amen. There's an old song we used to sing. We don't sing these old songs anymore. I like all the new stuff anyway. <laughs> well, we used to sing an old song. When I used to lead in the old days worship, this is when we were really small and just started. Amen. You guys all remember? From the rising of the sun to the... Somebody called me, Brother Frank Nepody calls me the singing pastor, amen. <laughs> the song goes like this. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised. And it repeats itself. It repeats itself again. And then it says... Praise ye the Lord. Praise all you servants of the Lord. You guys never heard that song? Oh, man. Kimmy won't let me teach it to you anyway. Amen. <laughs> but that's taken right out of the Word of God. In Psalm 113. Put that up for me, Kelly, would you? Psalm 113. Here's what it says. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise O oh, servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Amen. In Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, here's what it says. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Listen, we're, we're talking about the heavens. We're talking about creation declaring the glory of God. Amen. We're talking about those inanimate things that we, they have a voice even though they're not heard. The sun, every time it rises up, it speaks. Every time the moon shines, it speaks. Can somebody say amen? There may not be no sound from them, but it speaks about the glory of God. I love that. Every morning when the sun rises up, just know God is just encouraging you. When you see the rays of that sun, even if you don't see the sun rise, you know that when you get out of bed and that natural light is coming in, you know that God just reminded you, hey, I'm faithful enough to bring that sun up again for you today. Amen? Amen. And I'm faithful enough to let you know that if, 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 if you're not right, my mercy is new for you. Just ask me. I'll forgive you. Just confess to me. I'll forgive you. That's the faithfulness of God. That's how God is faithful. And God pretty much is saying from the time of creation, He'll never stop being unfaithful to His promise and to His covenant. He renewed that even after with Noah. Do you remember, darling, after the flood and the destruction and everything's wiped out, only Noah and his family is saved. They come out, but He gives Noah that promise. He reminds Noah of that promise. And here's what it says, Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not See, somebody say amen. amen. That's a promise of God. Hallelujah. So when, I'll tell you, when we begin to see this and, we, and when we're reminded that God is faithful, He cannot be unfaithful. That's why I love that the, the team 
took out the word. Thank you, Kimmy, for taking out that word. He's never failed me yet. He never, never will. Somebody say amen. 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 So I just want to encourage you that God is a promise keeper. Amen. Let's continue on because I'm going to try to wrap this up. And, and this is just to remind you that, that God is true and God is faithful. The word of God says that, that God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers chapter 23, here's what it says. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and he will not make it good? If, you, if anybody you can trust, you can trust God and you can trust his word. I pray that you read his word and study it. I pray that his word is a part of your life to give you that confidence to know that what he says and the promises. Listen, the Bible says all his promises are true. All his promises are yes. Amen. All his promises, you can say amen to. Because his promises are true. Jesus himself said, and I'm just going to quote this. Jesus said, you know, because when we think about his, God's promise, what is the greatest promise that God has given us? That if we, as John 3.16 says, because he gave his one and only son, this is a promise. If, if God said this promise that whoever believes in him, should have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, His only Son, that what? Whoever believes. How many believers do I have in the house this morning? How many believers are out there on the internet world? Amen? But whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a promise. That's a covenant. That if you give your life to the Lord and, he, and, and you're a born-again believer, it's not just about a person who goes to church. It's not a person who just says, I believe in God. No, you've got to be born again. You've got to be changed. You've got to be transformed. And when you are, there's a promise that God says, you shall never perish and you will have everlasting life. Amen. And that's why Jesus says to us, he, he told the disciples, he tells us, he says, look up, listen, I know that's getting crazy around here. He, you think it wasn't crazy in, his, in the, the, the day of the, the Israelites or the, or, or the disciples? Sure it was. You read the book of Acts, they were getting killed for the faith. They were being persecuted and killed for their faith. But Jesus said, listen, it doesn't matter how much trouble's going around. I want you to lift up your heads. Stop looking at what's going on around us. And lift up your heads because Jesus says, your redemption's drawing nigh. Amen. Your redemption's coming soon. Amen. Uh, that encourages me every morning when I wake up because as I just say, Lord, today's another day closer for you to take me home. Amen. Amen. But it doesn't make it easy. We know. I mean, I was going to read a passage in Romans where it says, you know, the, the earth is, since the beginning of time, the earth has been, since, I'm sorry, since sin came into the world, in Genesis chapter 3, to the fall of man, and the curse that came upon man, the curse that came upon the world, the world has been in groan, groaning in, in agony ever since then for almost 6,000 years. Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 8. We, we won't read that. And he goes on to say, even us as believers, it's like we keep saying, I don't know about you, but do you find yourself saying, Lord, when? When are you coming? Amen. 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 Anybody find themselves saying that? Lord, when are you coming? When you come in, Lord, I mean, uh, how much more of this we can take? This is nothing yet. Now we can put the word yet in there. This is nothing yet. Amen. This is nothing yet. Am I, are you guys with me still? I, I, I'm looking at my, my notes here. I think I got five more verses of scripture. Count them down. When I get to five, I'm done. But you know what James, James says in James 5, 7, and 8? He's speaking to us. He says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is hand. Listen. Establish your hearts. Don't get caught up in all of the hoopla that's going around, the craziness that's going around. Establish your hearts. My heart is always saying to all of us every Sunday, 
Draw nearer to the Lord. Get close to God. Fall in love with Him deeper. Don't just let your relationship be surface. Get deep with Jesus. Amen. Love Him. Listen to Christian radio. I have to say that because you know how many people didn't raise their hand when I said, who doesn't listen to Christian radio? Amen. Listen to music that's going to lift your hearts. Amen. Lift your spirits. There's a lot of great radio stations out there. And you know why I say that? And I, you know why I'm saying? Because going back to the, the covenant that God had with the day and the night, you know, you, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but you remember in Genesis 1, 3, when he said, let there be light, and he called the light day? And I was talking about that kind of representation of his presence. And on the fourth day, we're talking about the, the sun and the moon, the lights of the day and the night. That's a different day and night. But when you go back to Genesis chapter 3, that day, I can tell you're really waiting for this answer. Here it is. You know what he says? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he calls you children of the day. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes... Wait a minute, am I reading you the right? Yes. So that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet of hope and salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort one another, each other, and edify one another just as you are also doing. Here's what, here's, here's what he's saying. You are children of the day. You are children of the light. And even though there's all kinds of craziness that's going on around us, don't lose faith. God is faithful. And he says, whether you're awake or whether you're asleep, in other words, whether you're living or whether you die, praise God, because we have a covenant that is not going to be broken, because it says, we shall not perish but have everlasting life, which means to tell me, I'm going to live right now when the world is saying, don't live. When the world is saying, you better isolate yourself, shut yourself off, you better cut off relationship, you better... I'm going to live. This is just a sign of the world trying to say you can't live. God's simply saying whether you wake or sleep. I know I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Whether you wake or sleep. Hey, we are children of the day. We got an eternal covenant, a promise. God is faithful. Listen. Do I want to catch this Superman virus? No. But 99 point what? Six, seven are recovering from it? 180,000 have died or so forth and may continue? I'm not minimizing. I'm not being insensitive. People die all the time. Amen. 400,000 die every year from smoking or secondhand smoke. Do we hear about that? People die of tuberculosis and the flu every year by the thousands, tens of thousands. Do we hear about that? I know I'm getting in trouble for this. I know people are probably going to write in or stop coming to this church. I'm saying to you, live free. 
I'm not saying to be rebellious or resistant. The reason why I carry this is because when Alicia says, I'm not cooking, this is the only way I'm going to get a meal. <laughs> she says, no, not today. Okay, where do you want to go? <laughs> Seating for two, please. But the day's coming, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. From that, it's going to lead to something else, to something else. You've got to know Jesus. The covenant, the, the covenant that God has given us is that he's in control from the very beginning. He has a covenant with day and night, and he said to Jeremiah, you, listen, tell the people, they're in bondage, they're in captivity, they're in disarray, they're in despair, they're in hopelessness. Tell them, there will be a day I'm going to restore. Now, they didn't see the restoration in their day. This is 600 years before Christ. And, they're not, and we're, not seeing the, we're not seeing the full restoration right now. We're living in the year 2020. We don't know when the Lord's coming. But the covenant still stands. God says, I'm faithful. God is faithful. And, and, and the promise of his covenant, here's what the promise of his covenant is. Jesus himself said in John 14, you guys know this. John, no, wait, before, no, wait, wait, wait. Before we go to John 14, we're in, I gave you uh, two scriptures so far, right? We got three more to go. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, here's the promise. Here, it's, this is coming, you guys. This is coming. You've got to believe this. This could happen today. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a, a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hopefully we're not dead. But then we who are alive, somebody who is alive, say amen. amen. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So therefore comfort one another with these words. Isn't that awesome? And Jesus didn't lie when he said in John 14, 1 through 3, let your, let, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, here's the promise. I will come again and receive you to myself. For where I am, there you may be also. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. But we got to know that God is faithful and true. He's not lying to us. And he's going to keep that covenant with day and night. As long as day and night and every day we see the sun rise up in the morning, we know, God, you're faithful. Every time we see the moon shine at night, we can say, God, you're faithful. And when there's no moon at night, we can see the stars shining. God, you're faithful. God is reminding us that with that covenant he made with creation, he's made that covenant with us that he is faithful to fulfill his word. And this is my last number five. Revelation chapter 21, this is what is to come. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, no more coronavirus for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, I love this, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, watch this, write, for these words are true and faithful. Somebody say faithful. faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. And I'm going to say that last part in just a moment as the worship team comes up. 
This is the faithfulness of God. God is making it clear that God will be true to His Word. That God will be faithful even when we're not. Do you know Him? I hope you do. I continually, I'm going to sound like a broken record in, on, behind this pulpit every Sunday when I say to you, I plead with you, do you really know Him? You've got to know Jesus. You've got to know that He saved you. You've got to know you've been born again. You just can't have a knowledge of Him. You just can't have a mental assent of Him. You've got to know Him. You've got to know because He changed you. You've got to know because you have a desire for Him. You want Him. You hunger for Him. You want to know Him more. It's just like when you fall in love for the very first time or you're, you're the, the love of your life. You want to know each other. You just, can't, you just can't have enough of each other. You just want to be in each other's presence. And, and, and you know, that same... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, desire. You got to have for Him. You got to have for Him. And every morning you can wake up and you say, man, God, thank you. You're giving me another day to live. And the sun is preaching to me right now. The preaching to me from the sun is saying, in the, the, as it says in the prophet, even though it may not make no noise, can, can hear an audible sound, but yet that sun is preaching loud and clear that God, you have a covenant with that sun. You have a covenant with that moon. You have a covenant that they're going to keep shining. And there will be a day that that's even going to be wiped away. And you're going to make everything brand new. Every morning is a morning you can wake up and have a confidence. I don't know what song Kimmy wants to play here, just, but I'm going to end with this last part of that verse. But the cowardly, this is hard. Some may say, well, who's the cowardly? The one that doesn't want to give their life to the Lord. I'm afraid. What will my family say? What will my wife or my husband say? What will my co-workers say? Uh, I'm not ready. I'm kind of just afraid they're going to make fun. you coward. Coward. There's no place for cowards. The unbelieving. They refuse to believe there is a God. The abominable. I can imagine what kind of description we could put under that category. Murderers. Some may say, well, man, thank God for that. No, you know, the Bible says that even if you hate somebody, it's just like murder. You can't hate because it's just as much as like murder. It's how hard it is. God hates that. The sexual immoral. We put a lot of stuff under that. Adultery. Fornication, that's sex before marriage. Adultery is infidelity, having sex with, while you're married with somebody else. That's, that's adultery. It can go on. Pornography. Those things, that, those things that have gripped people's lives. God just simply saying, I love you. Repent. Stop watching those images. Sorcerers. That comes from the root, the word, pharmakeia, which is what we get pharmacy is drugs. Those of you that still, if they're illicit drugs and they're drugs, oh, well, it's legal, it's legal. You better be careful. You better, you better check with God. You better check with God because that recreational marijuana, that just drugs, heroin, cocaine, it, just drugs, meth, drugs, whatever those illicit drugs are, they're destroying you. Repent. God loves you. That's what a sorcerer is. Even, I, I know you're not going to like this one. Those of you that still smoke, that's a drug. That nicotine is a drug. Ask God to re just repent. Ask God to get rid of that. You're ruining your body. Idolaters, that's anything that you put before God. And all liars. Or somebody say, well, I don't have a problem. <laughs> all liars. All liars. I only drink occasionally once in a while all liars <laughs> they shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death 
Now you talk about the faithfulness of God in the good way, the good way of God. God's so faithful, He's so good. God is faithful. God is still faithful even to reject and say to somebody, I don't know you. Depart from me into the lake of fire, that which was prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't know you. But Lord, I went to church and I gave money and I did this for the church. I don't know you. That's a pretty hard saying to, for God, to, for Jesus to say, I don't know you. I don't know you. That means that person never came into relationship. Jesus would be a liar if somebody says, well, I know him. If somebody says, I know him, but they're living a life contrary. How can they face God that day and Jesus say, I don't know you. That means they never came into relationship. That's why you've got to know. You've got to know you have a relationship with Jesus because that day will come. And when the rapture takes place and where millions of us are gone, you're going to be left behind. Somebody say, well, then when that point is, then I'll know it's real. I'll give my life. Listen, you can't give your life now. You're not going to give your life then. You're not going to do it then. Because if you're thinking so much about your life right now, you're going to think about your life so much then. That's pretty hard. Let's, let's, let's get back into the good faithfulness of God. This is what I wanted to share with you so that we could be encouraged in the time where the world is going crazy and where we don't have to and we can put our confidence in the Lord. Are we flawless? Will we be perfect? No, we will not. Those of you that may have some addictions, give it to God. And if you do know the Lord, He will discipline you. He will discipline you. I love someone that recently made a bad choice and God will discipline him, but God's a merciful God. And he knows that. He knows that. And it brings comfort to him that even though we may make wrong choices and we make bad decisions, and we all have to pay a consequence for that, we know that his mercies are still new every morning. And even though there may be consequences of the choices we make, God will still bring you through this. Because in the end, no matter how long that consequence is, in the end, through a heart of repentance, in the end, God restores. Like he told Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, tell the people, there'll be a day I'm going to restore. There'll be a day that I'm going to bring them back. It's gonna, it, they're going to sing for joy again. And that day's coming for us. That day's going to come for all of us. That we're going to sing praises to our God. And we're going to say, do it again, Lord. I love that. Do it again. Do it again. Because God is faithful. Would you stand with me this morning? Lord, um, with all of us, with our heads bowed, our hearts humbled before you this morning, you are faithful. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, I pray that you give us this opportunity right now to just look inside. Holy Spirit, put the searchlight on us. Holy Spirit, just, just bring to light right now our iniquity, our transgressions, our sin. And may we be a people right now that willingly confess our failures, our faults, because you are faithful to forgive us. That's what you said. That if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us for, from all unrighteousness. Right now, I know that you're looking at each and every one of our hearts and not one of us can stand before you with, Lord, flawless hearts. But yet, you see us through the righteousness of your Son and all you want us to do is confess and you will forgive, giving everyone the opportunity right where we are. I pray, Lord, right now that that's between you and them. We're not going to rush this. You see, you can make that altar right where you are, right where you're standing. And this is the place where you can just come clean with God. And this is a great promise is that he can cleanse you right where you are if you'll confess that to him. Ask him with brokenness. 
with true contrition. And he said that he will not turn away that prayer, that heart. Go ahead. That's between you and God right now. That's between you and God. Thank you, Lord. Love you, Jesus. I'm not going to rush this. This is, this is so important for all of us. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm just trusting that right now, God, many hearts have just, just aligned themselves up with you. I'm trusting that all hearts here this morning have just said, God, Lord, I, I love you and I ask you to wash and cleanse me. Now I want every heart that has come to that place to say, Lord, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your cleansing. I receive your love and your mercy. Because just as the sun is shining outside right now, Lord, that reminds me that your mercies are new this morning. Thank you that I was here to hear this word from your heart, to hear your word from the scripture that reminds us of what is to come. And in the meantime, Lord, to just live, live honoring to you, live free in honoring you, not worrying about the consequences of what goes on, but Lord, to put you first in my life and Lord, just to share this, your message of love with others. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Let's sing that song again as Kimmy leads us. Amen.